Hi, welcome to a short presentation on the very gentle art of flower pressing. My name is Elaine Dygonen and I'm currently artist in residence at Keats House in Hampstead. It's a wonderfully inspiring place and still holds the atmosphere and resonance of a very special household. I've been particularly drawn to the garden as it's always changing and so much unfolds with the seasons. As you probably know, one of Keats' most famous poems, The Nightingale, was written under a plum tree there. Now, I'm not an expert in flower pressing, but I have become increasingly interested. Traditionally, the pressing of flowers has been a way to preserve something of beauty, to make a keepsake or a memento. Flowers are the bearers of a vast array of association and metaphoric value, and I couldn't help but wonder why Keats, being a man of his time, would know quite so much. I've realised that it was through his training as an apothecary that made him so aware of numerous botanicals and their uses. This is an image that was taken at Keats' grave in Rome in February. I was lucky enough to find the first violets emerging. I understand that the grave becomes covered in them. It's also really pertinent as when Keats lay dying, he said to his close friend, Joseph Seven, I would get away from suffering in watching the growth of a little flower. Perhaps the only happiness I have had in this world has been the silent growth of flowers. I very much wanted a memento of my time visiting the grave. It, it was a most wonderful time to and a very, very beautiful place to visit. Um, and I very naughtily picked two tiny little violets and sandwiched them into a favourite book. Um, it's called So Bright and Delicate and it's the love letters and poems of John Keats to Fanny Braun. It appears that violets crop up everywhere and here you can see them making a very famous appearance in one of Keats' medical notebooks. If you look closely on the left-hand side, you can see what are actually his doodles in the margin. So onto the pressing of flowers, you can really use anything from a book that you happen to have with you to a traditional press. I often carry a book and elastic bands and simply slip the specimens inside the book. But take note, so here you can see one that didn't work out so well and this is because the uh, specimen, which is a large nasturtium leaf, was really damp when I picked it. And so, of course, um, when it went into the book, the water had to go somewhere and the pages became quite mildewed. So obviously this is something to think about when you're picking and, and placing your specimens. Here you can see some poppy petals that have actually worked really beautifully. Again, I found these in Rome and I wasn't quite sure how that would work out, but I'd love the sort of papery thin quality of them and the colours and the tones. I'm absolutely delighted with these particular ones. Here you can see I made a really small press by alternating thick cardboard squares and the same size of art paper inside. And then an image I liked on the outside, like a cover. It's really light to carry but it's not as structured as a traditional press. And just in case it's not clear, you do have to press flowers in a sandwich of paper and board. So the paper needs to be a decent quality, like blotting, water, watercolour or cartridge, so that any moisture is absorbed. And the card needs to be a good thickness and quite smooth, because any ridges might transfer to your pressed flower. Sometimes shop-bought presses use really cheap cardboard uh, that has got ridges and you can see how that's marked the leaves in this photograph. You can try pressing any kind of flower. Obviously there are some constraints with size and obviously some specimens are much flatter than others. If they are more bulky then a traditional screw press is really helpful as you can add and increase the pressure over time. Here's an example of what Keats referred to as eglantines. Uh, it's a sweet briar rose. And these are ones from the garden at Keats House. They're an absolutely beautiful colour. They had quite a thick part where the stalk connects to the flower. And you can just trim this as much as possible before pressing. 
and also you can experiment with which way round you place them in, um, you know, front or backwards. Um, I'm not sure there's any rules about it. We'll see what works. And don't forget to press leaves and stalks as well, as these can easily be overlooked, but they have tremendous shape and colour and texture and so on. So just really experiment. And also later when you come to put things together, you might like to have the leaves and some stalks as contrast for the, um, for the brightness of the flowers. Look for interesting shaped leaves. And remember, even weeds can be beautiful. Francis Bacon said that there is no excellent beauty that hath not some strangeness in proportion. I've always loved that quotation. And there's definitely something for me in finding beauty in imperfection. These large violet plant leaves are also from near Keats' grave. Violas and pansies are great for pressing. I bought this bucket of pansies in a supermarket. And so every now and then I'll cut the flowers in order to press them. And then they seem to grow back within days. And the plant probably will thrive all summer. You can lay the pansies face up or down, and I also try to label with the date and the location. Here I've taken a folded piece of A4 cartridge paper and then put the flowers on one side, so when closed over, it can be inserted into a large book, or preferably with a stack of more heavy books on top. Here are some pressed. They do really well and hold their colour well too. Here's an example of a whole poppy in a screw down press. It's done really well, although I'm not sure what the insects gained from it. And this cherry laurel was also quite bulky before going in the press, but it's done really nicely. Foxgloves have been amazing this year. This was a trial as I'd never actually pressed them before. They start out looking like this. And now they're pressed, they look like this. Really beautiful. Here we have some that I pressed at a different time. And it's really interesting to note um, how different they look. You know, the colour hasn't kept nearly as well. I think it's a case of trialling with different kinds of paper. Um, I know that a lot of modern papers have optical brightness and chemicals added, so results are really going to vary. If you really um, are taking this to um, a professional level, then you'll probably want to record exactly what you do, um, because in my experience, results are always variable. There's a very old poem called The Flower and the Leaf um, that was initially attributed to Chaucer and was certainly influential on Keats. I think then later it was actually found to have been written by a woman. Um, but it, the key thing is that it alludes to states of fragility and endurance. The poem contains ideas that the beauty of flowers lasts maybe only for a season, but the beauty of leaves endures. So this is a large nasturtium leaf that pressed really well. Well, I hope that this has served to give you just a little bit of inspiration um, to have a go. It's the easiest thing in the world, really. And, um, and there'll be some other tutorials coming because obviously, you know, once you've pressed some flowers and uh, leaves and specimens, uh, what are we going to do with them? So that will be something that is coming. But in the meantime, very happy pressing and maybe consider sharing your results on Instagram. Um, I, for one, would absolutely love to see them. Thank you for listening and, um, and have a great summer.